I'm MTA Chief Development Officer Jano Lieber. I'll be introducing the governor in a couple moments, but first of all, I'll acknowledge some very special guests. County Exec Ed Mangano, Assemblyman Michael Montesano, Town of, Hempstead, Town of North Hempstead Councilman Vivianna Russell, thank you for being here. Village of Westbury Mayor, Mayor Peter Cavallaro, Kevin Law, the President and CEO of the Long Island Association, thank you. And Anthony Simon, a great labor leader, General Chairman of SMART, thank you. This morning at 640, an overheight 18-wheeler hauling frozen donuts and owned by a Reading, Pennsylvania-based trucking company struck the bridge and became wedged underneath. Long Island Railroad structural engineers were summoned to ensure that the bridge remained safe for trains. And as a precaution, in the interim, the railroad placed a temporary speed restriction on the bridge. The bri bridge was pronounced safe for full speed travel at 7.30 AM, but during the 50 minutes that elapsed, 11 morning rush hour trains carrying an estimated 11,000 people were delayed between 7 and 23 minutes. The driver was issued a summons for disobeying the posted height and traffic control devices. The truck remained wedged and blocking this auto traffic until about 12.30 this afternoon, or about six hours after the bridge strike. This is not the first time this has happened. In fact, this bridge has been struck 80 times since January 1st of 2008, or roughly between six and nine occasions per year. As in this case, every time the bridge is hit by a truck, it has the potential to delay thousands of our uh, Long Island Railroad customers while the bridge inspectors have to be summoned and temporary speed restrictions put in place. As I said, this is an all too common occurrence, but it's one that will be a thing of the past starting later this month. Just 11 months ago, the MTA board approved a contract to Halmar International of Nanuet, New York, and just five months ago, the contractors began assembling the new bridge in April here in the parking lot so that we could move the entire bridge into place quickly without months of service outages that would have come and, and impacted on our customers if we had br built the bridge in place using traditional methods. This construction followed robust collaboration between the Long Island Railroad and the local community that began when the LIR started engaging with the village of Westbury on the replacement of the Ellison Avenue Bridge, which is about a half a mile west of us. The new bridge here will have a clearance of 14 feet, or two feet two inches higher than the current bridge, which was put into service 103 years ago when standards were much different than today. The new higher bridge will reduce, if not eliminate, these kinds of truck strikes at this location. On Monday morning at 5 a.m., the first Long Island Railroad trains will begin rolling over this newly built bridge, effectively bringing this complex, challenging project to completion in less than a year after it was approved by the MTA board. This project is going to be followed by seven other bridges that are going to be upgraded or replaced as part of the historic third track project, which will deliver Long Islanders more frequent and reliable train service and huge safety and economic benefits. I, I think we all would like to thank Governor Cuomo for making this long deferred dream a reality. Indeed, under Governor Cuomo's leadership, the state is revolutionizing how we deliver big pro infrastructure projects across the board. Since 2011, when the governor signed legislation authorizing state agencies to use design-build contracting, we've seen example after example of projects where combining the design and construction into a single package has helped us to deliver projects on time and on budget. That's what happened here. This $9.7 million project to replace and enhance a bridge that's central to the railroad's operation is being built on time, on budget, through that design-build process. Governor, this is an example of your commitment and the Long Island Railroad's commitment, indeed the whole MTA's commitment, to the community, to customers, and to perform work not just on time and on budget, but to get it done with minimum disruption and with ample notification to all of the customers and communities. Governor, we thank you, and please welcome the 56th Governor of the State of New York, Andrew M. Cuomo.
Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with so many of my colleagues, County Executive Mangano. It's a pleasure. Assemblyman Montesano, Mayor Kevin Law, Anthony Simon, who's a great labor leader, and Jano Lieber, who's the Chief Development Officer of the MTA. You heard the plan. The plan is October 21st. The bridge behind us will be picked up, placed uh, in place, replace the old bridge. It will be done over the weekend, and Monday morning, the trains will be running again. It's an ambitious plan to get such a big piece of work done in just a couple of days. If it doesn't work, then General Lieber, Chief Development Officer, will not be off to a great start. <laughs> I'm kidding, I have all the confidence. Uh, but, you know, when you hear Jano say 80 times this bridge has been struck, five to nine times a year, it makes you think, uh, where were we for 80 years, right? Uh, but that was the story of the Long Island Railroad. Long Island Railroad started 1834. It was built not as a railroad to serve commuters, it was built as a way to Montauk Point to get a ferry to Boston. That's why they built the Long Island Railroad. Look at the vision, look at the uh, imagination they had. They were going to build an entire railroad just to get to a ferry to expedite the trip to Boston. Ferry service never worked, but in the meantime, they built the railroad. And then in the meantime, they populated Long Island. When they first built the railroad, 37,000 people lived on Long Island. Now you have 2.8 million. And rather than it becoming a route to a ferry, it became a commuter route. And it stayed basically the way it was built ever since. Many places, a single track it was never really updated. There were attempts to update it over the years, but they ran into community opposition, or they were half-hearted, or uh, one obstacle or another. Uh, but uh, finally, finally, we have initiated a modernization of the Long Island Railroad, a more ambitious plan than has been enacted since its initial creation. Uh, we call it the third track, but really it's a modernization of the entire railroad. It's over 100 projects, seven bridges, seven overpasses, widening stations, new parking facilities, 20 miles of new track. It will remake the Long Island Railroad for the next generation. And this is really the first project on that third track uh, endeavor. Long overdue, but it recently passed uh, by the state and working with the local communities. I want to thank the people who worked very hard to make it pass. It was attempted initially over 70 years ago. They started talking about it. Uh, but we finally got it done after 70 years, and the people who are here today are the main reason it passed. And let's give themselves a round of applause and thank them for it. And it will start again with this bridge, uh, which should have been replaced a long, long time ago.